worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to prepare your heart in an act of gratitude as we worship together this day. Good morning, beloved, and welcome to worship. This morning, it's all about gratitude. And I hope today you are thinking about all the things that make your heart smile. So this morning, as I begin, I'm going to read something from one of my favorite poets, Jane Kenyon. I got out of bed on two strong legs. It might have been otherwise. I ate cereal, sweet milk, ripe, flawless peach. It might have been otherwise. I took the dog uphill to the birch wood. All morning I did the work I love. At noon I lay down with my mate. It might have been otherwise. We ate dinner together at a table with silver candlesticks. It might have been otherwise. I slept in a bed in a room with paintings on the wall and planned another day just like this one. But one day I know it will be otherwise. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 through 27. Brothers and sisters, we ask you to show appreciation to those who are working hard among you and those who are your leaders as they guide and instruct you in the Lord. They are priceless. When you think about them, let it be with great love in your heart because of all the work they have done. Let peace live and reign among you. Brothers and sisters, we strongly advise you to scold the rebels who devote their lives to wreaking havoc, to encourage the downcast, to help the sick and weak, and to be patient with all of them. Make sure no one repays evil for evil, but always pursue what is good as it affects one another in the church, but also all people. Celebrate always, pray constantly, and give thanks to God no matter what circumstances you find yourself in. This is God's will for all of you in Jesus, the Anointed. Don't suppress the Spirit. Don't downplay prophecies. Take a close look at everything. Test it, then cling to what is good. Put away every form of evil. 
So, may, so now may the God of peace make you his own completely and set you apart from the rest. May your spirit, soul, and body be preserved, kept intact and wholly free from any sort of blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed. For God who called you is faithful and he can be trusted to make it so. Brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Greet one another warmly with a holy kiss. Here is my charge to you before the Lord. Have this letter read to all our brothers and sisters in the faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. This week, gratitude is on my mind. And as I think about gratitude, it occurred to me that there's two different ways to be, uh, to be thankful. One of them I might call the via negativa, which I'm totally stealing from another context. But when I think about the negative way, uh, via negativa, I think of being thankful for the way things are not. It's what we say when, what we mean when we say it could be worse. You know, I may have this terrible cold right now, but at least I don't have COVID. Or uh, I dented my car, but at least I'm not like my neighbors who had their car totaled. We look at life through a, everything could be better, but at least they're not worse framework. And that can come in handy because there are some days that just, we almost need to, to think that way. But today, uh, as I want us to think about this, what I would really like for us to think is maybe more of a via positiva, uh, more of a positive way. What are we thankful for in this particular moment? Sometimes when I, when I think about this, I, my mind goes back to the movie Pollyanna. And I used to love that movie when I was growing up. I loved Haley Mills and I loved everything about the story. I loved all the actors and actresses. But oftentimes as, as I grew a little older, when you ever heard the phrase that somebody is being called a Pollyanna, generally what it means is that they're just maybe either too nice to be true or they don't look at the, the difficult side of life, that they're just a little naive. But if you really pay attention to that story, and I just watched a more updated version of it recently, if you really listen to the story, what it's really talking about is this young girl who has been through great grief. She's lost both of her parents. She's lost her way of living. She's been shuffled off to a relative who barely noticed her existence before. That when she teaches all of these different people the glad game, it's not so they pretend that things are better than they actually are. Rather, the glad game was all about saying, yes, there are things to be sad about, but let's concentrate on those things that make us glad, those things that we can truly be grateful for. And so I kind of love that idea. And it also reminded me of a book that I read many years ago now, and I can't really remember much about the book, but it was the one by Mitch Albom that's called, I believe, uh, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And although I really can't remember most of the story now, the part that absolutely stunned me, there's just this little paragraph about Adam, the first man, and that Adam came into being he looked at the world and saw that it was good, and he had a long, very eventful day, and then as human beings do, do he fell asleep. And in the morning, he opened his eyes and was surprised because he got another day. That paragraph has just stayed in my heart for many, many years because I wonder how many times what would really be helpful in my life is instead of looking at, uh, I can be grateful because it, it isn't worse, or even look at the things that I can be glad for, but maybe it's a short list today. I can look and say, when I open my eyes in the morning, it's another day. I get another chance. I think that's one of the reasons that I love Jane Kenyon's poem so much. That today, on this day, it might not have been, and someday it won't be, 
But today, I have two strong legs. Today, I can eat cereal with glorious, fresh, ripe peaches. Today, I can take a nap with my beloved. Today, I can walk up the hill with my dogs. Today, I can eat a meal where we've gotten out the silver candlesticks. Today, in this moment, there are things for which we can be truly and humbly grateful. If you've been in any conversation with anybody over the last couple of months, there's a lot of, of uh, memes about all the things that could possibly happen in 2020 have either already happened or they're, they're waiting in the wings to happen. And it's become kind of a funny way of just dealing with this really stressful time. But if I remind myself that I can be aware of God's presence in each moment, maybe gratitude would even change what it means in my life. There was a story that comes out of the, the tradition of the desert elders. And they were people who went out into the desert after Christianity was legalized. Because in the, among the desert fathers, they realized that once Christianity was legalized, people stopped taking it quite as seriously as they had. And so these solo people would go out into the deserts, they would find a cave, they would reflect, they would meditate, they would memorize scripture, they would live very simple lives. And because they were doing this sort of remarkable things, people from the cities would come out to them in the desert, and they would sometimes seek out these monks who really, really didn't want to be found. And in this one story, I remember that this one man had had traveled a great distance to visit this holy monk in his cave. And he was someone who had the reputation of never really talking. And he thought that he could get this wisdom that this, this Abba, this monk, this hermit might have for him. And so he went through all of these trials and tribulations to get there and he finally finds the man who was sitting outside his, his little cave weaving baskets because that's how they could uh, uh, make some money to buy food. And he says, Abba, I have, I have come all of this way and I want your wisdom. I, I want to know how to draw closer to God. And there was silence, of course. Eventually, the monk drew in the sand in front of his cave one word, and the one word was awareness. This was very disappointing. <laughs> this guy had come all this way. He had gone through all of these uh, terrible adventures in order to be there, and, and this is all that the monk can come up with. And so he, he waits a few moments. He says, but, but Abba, I don't understand. What, what does awareness mean? And underneath where he had written awareness, the monk again took his finger and wrote out the word awareness another time. Maybe you don't understand, holy one, but I've come all of this way and I need something to take back with me that will help me to live a life that is, that is close to God, that is united with God, that is pleasing to God. Please, what does it mean? Awareness, awareness. There's a long silence. And finally, the old monk bends down and with his finger writes one more word. You're probably running ahead of me now. You know what he wrote. Awareness, awareness, awareness. That's a great story. And I don't know any more about the story except for that. Maybe the guy slapped the front of his forehead and said, this is not the life for me and hightailed at home. But in contemplative traditions, the story is told in order to help us realize that the thing that holds us back from understanding who God is and how God relates to us and what God wants for us in our lives is not that God isn't present, it's that we're not paying attention. How much of my day am I paying attention to where God's glory and beauty and grace surround me? I often use the illustration of when I would go down uh, cross-country skiing, and I loved cross-country skiing. I could swoosh, swoosh, swoosh really, really well right up until there was a hill. 
And when there is a hill with a little bit of a drop off, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time there is a tree right down where, and then the trail would immediately turn after you have to go down this long hill. And it just terrified me. So I would, I would prepare myself, and, and usually that was where it was icy too. So I'd prepare myself to go down, and I realized that um, I would hit the tree. I, I, I would hit the tree because by focusing my attention on the tree at the bottom, um, that's where my skis went. And wherever I was focusing my attention, I was going to end up. So I, I actually sort of substituted a technique that I called sitting on my skis in order to get down the hill. And at least when I hit the tree, it wasn't very hard. But, I, but as I think about the idea of gratitude and how essential it is in my own life, and I think in all of our lives right now, when it just seems like I... I open my eyes to the day and I say, I wonder what bad thing is going to happen now, because now we sort of anticipate that because so many things have gone wrong that, that we're not even going to get through a day without some major catastrophe happening. But instead, if I point my skis in the right way, if I am aware of the presence of God, if I open my eyes to the presence of God in each and every moment, Maybe instead of the via negativa, which says, well, at least it isn't as bad as it could be. Maybe I would have the grace to open my eyes in the morning, plant my feet on the floor and say, wow, I get another day. Beloved, I invite you this week as we move into a, a rather different kind of season of Thanksgiving to join me in a practice that when you wake up in the morning and your eyes first open, that you do what Thich Nhat Hanh, the, the Tibetan Buddhist monk, uh, suggests we do every morning, which is lift up the corners of our mouths because making a smile changes everything. So two things, open your eyes and say, wow, I get another day and then smile. I'm guessing that this week you may find things that deepen your gratitude. And as one writer entitled his book, that gratitude truly, gratitude is the heart of prayer. Happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful for you. I pray for you. And I ask and solicit your prayers for us also. Times are challenging but God is so good. Thanks be to our God. Amen. Really? Are we right in the way? Is he playing? No, I think he's just walking. Okay, come here guys. <whistles> Sophie, <whistles> Sophie, Sophie. <whistles> ah, 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 ah. Stay right here. Notes here. Are you playing? Okay, we'll move. <laughs> Okay, so we need to move. Where shall we move? Sophie, come on, buddy. All right, let's go. Where shall we move? Let me think, let me think, let me think. We can move up. 